welcome back and you find me today on yet another Pateley Bridge pie and sausage run it's becoming something of a fabled institution in my life as this <laughs> the Pateley Bridge pie and sausage run to Weatherfield's Butchers in Pateley Bridge yet another shout out to that fabulous establishment any road up so this video really apart from being a, uh, a, a pie and sausage run is going to be my initial review of this year bike the Royal Enfield Classic 350 in beautiful halcyon green and if you've watched some of my uh, previous videos, certainly the more recent ones, you'll be alive to the fact that I've become a bit of a Royal Enfield fanboy. So I've transitioned to um, mid-sized motorcycles from large capacity touring stroke adventure style motorcycles. So um, I've got three three Royal Enfields, a Royal Enfield Interceptor, a Royal Enfield Scram 411 and this here Royal Enfield Classic 350. Uh, they're all new bikes, all with a, a three year warranty. But my initial thoughts are that this, the Classic 350, and this may have something to do with the naming of the model but I think it's the most classic looking the most faithful homage to that 1950s 60s British motorcycling vibe that's how I would describe it both in terms of what the bike looks like to how it actually makes you feel and how it sounds so yeah I suppose um, how a bike makes you feel is a combination of how it looks how it sounds how it actually handles whether it lives up to your expectations uh, and this bike more than lives up to my expectations but of course those expectations have got to be reasonable and realistic if you're looking for a bike that's going to take you uh, well beyond the environs of the national speed limit then it won't be this one but it'll certainly get you to 70 mile an hour once it's running So my observations then um, initially and obviously at some point I'll do the walk around when we get somewhere a little more picturesque um, but in terms of the riding experience what would be my observations at coming up to what a uh, couple of hundred miles on this bike so uh, not yet had its first service Well, I've touched upon the looks, but let's touch upon the practicalities. From a riding point of view, it's simplicity itself. There are no fancy electronic gadgets to worry about. There is no smorgasbord of telemetry on endless TFTs and LCD readouts to keep you preoccupied there's none of that nonsense what you see is what you get you do get ABS and you get a fuel gauge and that's or, and a trip meter that's about it of course and your nice retro speedo here but in terms of the ride let's get just get a couple of negatives out of the way first and I hesitate to call them negatives the more sort of irritations or 
observations uh, and they're not actually substantive in nature um, because in the one case uh, it's a temporary situation and in the other case it's just a matter of tweaking your riding style right so let's uh, let's get to the first embuggeration then uh, if you like um, and, and it's it's something that's common um, must be common to all the Royal Enfields but particularly so this bike um, even more so on the Scram 411 and uh, to a lesser extent on the interceptor and that is the running in period now all brand new bikes have a running in period uh, between three and six hundred miles normally uh, and on the Royal Enfields it's 300 miles it certainly is on the interceptor the uh, the scram and uh, this the classic um, but uh, certainly with the uh, with the scram and the classic it's a two-stage running in process uh, it's just pretty much a, a, a one-stage running in process on the interceptor but with one or two caveats but uh, there'll be a, a more in-depth review, review on the interceptor and the scram coming up so uh, I won't go into any more detail on those two bikes but for this bike there's a two-stage running in process there's the up to 300 mile first service running in period uh, and then there is the um, sort of 300 to just over a thousand mile-ish uh, running in period so the first stage of the running in period the one that I'm in at the moment uh, prior to the first service limits effectively limits the, the revs on the engine now there's no rev counter on this bike so the only way that you can judge where you are RPM wise is um, with regards to the speed in any given gear so what the uh, what the handbook gives you is a table that basically tells you what speeds you should not exceed in each gear for both running in periods i.e. either side of the first service so prior to the first service uh, basically, well it's in kilometres per hour is, is the guidance on the table uh, but not to overcomplicate it, this is the general rule of thumb that, that I adopt it's not a formal recommendation by any way, shape or form it's just uh, an easy way that I use to make sure that I'm not overdoing things and that is <coughs> um, before the first service first gear maximum 10 mile an hour second gear 20 mile an hour third gear 30 mile an hour fourth gear 40 miles an hour fifth gear 50 miles per hour that is not um, precisely in accordance with the guidance but the uh, the observation I'm going to make and it's, it's sort of peculiar to people who live in uh, very hilly terrain like I do so I live in in Yorkshire the sort of west stroke North Yorkshire and it's a very very hilly landscape some of those hills are very steep you can't avoid it so there are occasions when it is impossible to the letter virtually to follow the running in guidance when you're going up a hill because to keep the uh, to keep the revs down and to uh, keep the maximum speed in any given gear down um, you, you find you find yourself changing up before and beyond the bike's ability in a particular gear to cope with a hill so for example if you were to religiously say well I'm not going to do um, I'm not going to do more than uh, 20 mile an hour in second so if you're going up a hill 20 mile an hour in, in second and the traffic behind you is going to be wanting to do 30, 40 mile an hour so you might think well I'll bang it into third then so that I can go up to 30 mile an hour or fourth, 40 mile an hour but the hill will be so steep the bike just won't cope with it so it's a little bit it's a little bit frustrating it's a little bit like hard work running these bikes in in the initial stages after the first service 
those sort of figures go up a bit and, and instead of being limited to 50 in fifth you're probably looking at 60 miles an hour uh, and once you get beyond a thousand miles then uh, you know you're, you're okay up to the bike's maximum capabilities but uh, yeah just a, a little bit annoying and it, it's the same with the scram uh, in fact it's uh, a little bit more strict with the scram but so that's a I hasten to say it's a negative but as I said it's a, it's a temporary negative because once the bike's fully running of course those restrictions cease to apply anyway uh, so the other one right is the brakes so the front brakes certainly on this and the scram if you are used to a more modern performance motorcycle with the uh, some fairly aggressive bite to the front brake you're gonna be a little bit surprised when you try and anchor on the front brake uh, on, on this bike and on the scram um, it's adequate but it's a it's a single disc up front on both bikes and what you have to do with uh, with these here Royal Enfields in terms of braking is You've got to get to the uh, get back to the old school of thinking, uh, and, and, and back in the day, uh, certainly in my case, I was taught and encouraged when I was learning to ride to apply both brakes and to get a feel for the balance between front and rear. And you have to get back into that that school of thinking with these Air Royal Enfields. Um, you know because on other bikes with much more efficient uh, front braking systems uh, I very rarely use the rear brake unless it was sort of for uh, um, modulating the speed a little bit going into bends and, and low speed maneuvering and what have you but with these um, because the rear brake is a very good brake I go so far as to say the rear, the rear brakes better than the front brake uh, but you've got to get back to the old school way of riding where uh, you know the, the, your, your optimum braking comes from applying both brakes in a measured and balanced way which you, you do get a feel for eventually so those are the only uh, only two things really and the rest is all very positive so the riding position is very very comfortable uh, indeed it's sort of sit up and beg I mean you know it's not as if we've got ape hangers is it but um, it's, uh, it's uh, a very relaxed upright comfortable riding position uh, legs bent at the knee not too acute an angle not to not quite 90 degree 90 degrees not not for me anyway um, straight back and uh, no strain on the wrists whatsoever now see here's an example 30 mile an hour fourth gear steep hill try to pick up speed she don't want to do it at this point and, and you know that's just something you have to get used to during the running in period let's have a bit of fifth so a fantastic comfortable riding position good mirrors uh, slight view of my elbows but for the most part um, I get a good 80-90% view to the rear Suspension, well, uh, surprisingly good actually, or certainly surprisingly good compared with what I was given to anticipate. The roads aren't the best in this area, and there is a certain tendency for the bike to track a little bit in some of these ruts that you can see here. Um, but nothing, uh, nothing spectacularly bad at all and uh, seems to cope very very well uh, indeed with these uh, undulating road surfaces I mean you could upgrade the suspension but I wouldn't be throwing that sort of money on a, on a bike like this I think the best thing you could do with a bike like this is to keep it as original as possible 
but I will talk you through the uh, handful of accessories um, that I've uh, that I put on so far when I do the uh, when I do the walk around. So switch gear, nice quality. You've got the typical Royal Enfield kill switch incorporated with starter here on the right. The button you can see there by my thumb, that's the hazard warning uh, switch. And on the right hand side, that's your lot. On the left hand side, obviously you've got your uh, indicator. You've got your horn. You've got your headlight full and low beam and pass. And you've got this little button here and all that does is it cycles on the LCD between trip, time and mileage. And that's all you're getting. As you can see there the fuel gauge is separate. Handling is excellent. Uh, for a 350cc motorcycle it's quite heavy, you know, it's only just under 200 kilograms wet weight. So for a, a relatively small bike that, that's quite heavy. But as we'll see when we do the walk around, a lot of that is attributed to the uh, high quality materials that have been used in the overall construction of the bike. The vast majority of the, uh, the bodywork is metal, not plastic. And uh, it really does give a quality feel uh, to the overall experience. See, here's the trick. You just you've got to keep the momentum going. This isn't a particularly steep hill, but if I'm going to religiously follow the running in guidelines, as you can see, you're in a ridiculous situation where you just it's just not practical and uh, if, if Royal Enfield need to ad need to address anything I can, I'm in second gear now I mean this is a fast national speed limit 60 mile an hour road and um, down into third gear and only just being able to select fourth now so the running in period on these bikes, let me tell you, in a hilly area like this, is a real problem. And you've just got to get through it. Okay, so here she is, my 2022 Royal Enfield Classic 350 in Halcyon Green with those uh, lovely uh, rose gold accents that you can see there. So I'll just take you through the bike and the first thing really to talk about I think is the build quality because it's exceptional and particularly a bike at this price point, you know, just sort of um, under four and a half thousand pounds. The, uh, the fit and finish is absolutely outstanding. So, first of all, metal. Metal mud guards. Metal tank. F*** off. So uh, yeah, so this bike has a real quality feel to it. Metal mud guards, metal cowl for the headlamp and um, instrument assembly, metal tank, metal engine casings, metal panels, again rear mud guard, metal. A real quality feel uh, to the bike. And uh, in terms of its looks, and its uh, overall 
appearance in terms of uh, classic uh, motorcycles uh, and to my mind of, uh, of all the uh, modern classic motorcycles that are available be they from Triumph or other Royal Enfields or uh, other brands uh, this one to my mind is the most redolent of the heady days of British motorcycling in the 1950s and 60s they've just about got the design perfect so I'm going to a few of the technical specs I'm, I'm not big on numbers but I'll go through them for you so basically it's a uh, 350cc uh, single overhead cam single cylinder engine and it puts out the grand total of 20 brake horsepower and 27 newton meters of torque but don't let that fool you once fully running this uh, the, this bike's uh, well well capable of 70 miles an hour so the brakes then are by Bray branded uh, by Bray apparently meaning by Brembo and uh, a two pot caliper at the front operating on a 300 millimeter disc on the rear we've got a single pot uh, caliper uh, operating on a 270 millimeter disc uh, as you can see a double-sided swing arm suspension chain drive and uh, adjustable for preload rear shock absorbers so uh, just the basics really but all that you're actually ever going to need on a bike like this as you can see the quality of finish extends right right throughout the bike I mean even that side stand there is obviously a top quality um, uh, cast item it's not it's not a, a, a cheap stamped affair um, so let's talk about uh, a couple of accessories that I've uh, put on this bike got the Royal Enfield um, rear rack here uh, and that simply is a, re a replacement for the grab handle that uh, that comes with the bike very very straightforward albeit that these bolts here are a bit of a pig to line up so it's very simple in principle but it can be a bit frustrating but it is a, a straight swap over uh, for the uh, grab rail that comes with the bike and I've also fitted from again genuinely genuine Royal Enfield parts these uh, fairly humongous crash bars which are a lot bigger than ever I anticipated they would be uh, again very straightforward to fit um, and obviously do the job um, but again I think the jury's out a little bit uh, on those but um, God forbid should uh, should the bike go over they should do a, an excellent job of uh, protecting the bodywork uh, in terms of the instrumentation it's all neatly accommodated here neatly accommodated here in this uh, very uh, retro styled uh, headlight and instrument cowl uh, basically you get a box standard speedometer in miles and kilometers per hour you get a a liquid crystal display which gives you the time and if you cycle through by pressing this info button here will then give you total number of miles and then your trip meter as you can see this bike's now done 205 miles so another hundred and it'll be uh, time for first service uh, there is this Royal Enfield badge here which I'm told can be removed to accommodate the tripper navigation but um, the bikes don't tend to come with tripper navigation as standard which the Scram 411 does I've heard it say that that's because of a shortage of chips but uh, uh, maybe that's the case maybe not I don't know but uh, it certainly looks like there's capacity to fit one there if you so wished and uh, let's fire her up and have a listen to the exhaust and that uh, characteristic thump thump of a of a single 
through what's a, a, a very nice looking and very nice sounding OEM exhaust so we can just have a listen to this now as OEM exhaust go that's a cracker and uh, it comes as standard with the uh, pillion seat fitted but uh, this assembly will come off um, and some people think uh, that the, the bike looks uh, looks better with the passenger seat removed because you get that uh, that uh, curve of the uh, of the mud guard which is colour coordinated with the rest of the bike of course but uh, yeah a cracking bike and as I sort of alluded to earlier I think of all the retro uh, retro styled modern classics available on the on the market currently um, I think this bike the uh, 350 Classic is uh, the most resonant uh, with with that design concept and uh, really takes me back uh, well it doesn't take me back because I'm not old enough but uh, in my mind if you like it takes me back to when uh, when like my dad were riding motorcycles uh, <coughs> pre and uh, post war uh, tip, but particularly in the 50s and 60s it really does have that vibe about it okay so that's it for now I hope you uh, enjoyed this initial review of my Royal Enfield Classic 350 uh, coming up I'll be doing an updated review on the Scram 411 and an updated review on the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 uh, but for today yep yeah, thanks for watching uh, ride safe uh, and above all be kind so uh, I'll catch you next time please hit that subscribe please hit a like and please click that notifications bell and uh, I'll speak to you soon okay cheers